Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 10 with me Craig Barton. Now this year I've got an absolutely delightful Year 11 class. They're one of the top sets and they've got GCSE targets of B's, A's and A stars. Now they're actually sitting the GCSE for the first time in November. I'm not going to go into the reasons why they're, uh, why they're actually sitting it in November in this uh, particular feature. But anyway, they are sitting it in November. So therefore, since they've come back in the start of the year, it's been my job to get all their skills up to scratch in a pretty quick time. And it's been quite frantic and at times not the most enjoyable way of, of teaching and learning. But anyway, that's beside the point. One of the things I wanted to make sure is absolutely top quality is their algebra skills and specifically their algebra manipulation skills for some of the higher A and A star things like factorizing quadratics and algebraic fractions and all that kind of stuff. And I stumbled upon this resource and I, it just absolutely ticked all the boxes because I don't like to give them boring stuff and I like to challenge them and interest them and also differentiate and this just it does everything, it's lovely. So here it is, Algebraic Manipulation Maze, which has been kindly uploaded by Dan Walker. So it looks like that. And it's really nice because what students have got to do is start down here and they can travel along any path, but they can only pass through if the identity is true. Now you can see what Dan has brilliantly done here straight away. So for example here, you could get some students thinking, oh yeah, 4x plus 9 squared, yep, yeah, square the 4x, 16x squared, square the 9, 81, yeah, I'm going through here. But of course it addresses all the key misconceptions and obviously there's a, there's a few x terms that have gone astray there. So students have to check absolutely every single one. And I'm picturing this being used with my year 11s um, as a group discussion, perhaps in twos, perhaps in fours, but I want students arguing with each other. Is that right? Can I just take, subtract the tops and subtract the bottoms? Can I just square both terms? Or is there something else going on? And then they move up to once they figure out the first way through, then they've got to move up the next row, which is the right way through there, which is the wrong way through, how far up the maze can they get? And by the time, if they can get to the top, look at all the skills they've done. You've got quadratic factorizing, algebraic fractions, uh, algebraic fractions with different denominators. Uh, just lovely, lovely, lovely things uh, that, that they've got to be able to do. And unlike a lot of TES resources, uh, Dan's actually provided the solutions here as well. And I love this. <laughs> my, I mean, my year 11s are going to kick off. They're not going to be happy when they, uh, when they start down this blind alley thinking, oh, I'm making great progress and get to the top and they can't actually get to the finish line. But I love that as well. And there's the correct route through. And there's some really tricky bits of maths that have got to be done to get you there. But think of all the algebra, the learning, and think of all the discussions and the misconceptions that are being unearthed. And then I love this as well. Look at that. Such a simple idea, but so effective. Design your own maze. So I'm going to set it to my year 11s. I'm going to get them in groups again, and I'm going to get them designing mazes on all kinds of different things. So uh, someone can do one on fractions, someone can do one on indices, uh, someone can do them on percentages, and get them to, I'm going to say to them, right, I want you to design a maze that's going to catch people out. So you're going to have to come up with some misconceptions. Where are people going to go wrong with indices? Where are people going to go wrong with fractions? So really get them thinking about it. And then the next lesson, let's play the mazes. Let's see which is the trickiest maze, which is the easiest maze. And it's just a different way of revising. And I think my kids are really going to thrive on it. And I hope your students will too. Uh, whilst we're here and I'm thanking Dan, I also want to add a personal thanks for another resource that he's, he's uploaded, which I've used in the past. It's this A Star GCSE Maths paper. Now, this is brilliant. This is a collection of basically the nastiest questions that have ever appeared on GCSEs. And there's, he's done a lovely little cover sheet on it that says not for the faint hearted. And he's absolutely right. And if you've got the kind of class you thrive on a challenge, I'd give them that because it's, it's brilliant. And once again, he's done model answers as well, which is fantastic. So there's two resources to really engage and challenge uh, your high ability GCSE groups. Um, hope you found that useful and I'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care and bye for now.